I'm not an emotional sort of person, but I thought this was a, a great achievement, not just um, for Edinburgh Council, who did it, but it was an achievement for all the millions of people who died. I think, you know, I don't know of many memorials to slavery. Um, and to feel that I was a part of this memorial, um, I think it was quite um, emotional in that sense. I will bring my, my family, not just my grandchildren, I'll, I'll bring my wife and my, I even get my daughters because I want everybody to, to see that a lot of things in life are possible, but they can only sometimes come true if you have the help of the, the system. But unsurprisingly, not all were happy about this sudden decision. Bobby and his supporters wrote a letter to the council demanding that the temporary plaque be removed. It's quite obvious that the council felt like, or at least the leader felt like he had to act to um, placate the situation. It's very easy to point at a statue that's 150, you know, that's huge. It takes up, you know, the center focal point of St Andrew's Square. It's a perfect target. It's vitally important that our history is not revised or changed or certain parts of it are pulled out to suit current modern agendas. Bobby's letter triggered a strong response. Councillor Graham Campbell is part of the Black Lives Matter movement. Oh, that's just a joke, isn't it? Edinburgh Council have allowed biased, historically inaccurate and defamatory information to be placed on the temporary plaques that commemorate the legacy of Henry Dundas. Uh, well, he's dead. He can't be defamed. And it's historically accurate. The fact is, we've been telling a fake history for all this time that the false plaque has been up there. And his comments on Black Lives Matter, he doesn't support Black Lives Matter. He can't possibly do if he doesn't understand the historical necessity of that role that his ancestor played. Not only do we think it's great that the plaque has been changed, it's about time. Four years after the debate about the Melville Monument first started, passions are as high as ever on both sides. If the City of Edinburgh Council went ahead with the current wording and put it on the plaque, on the statue, I think, I think that would be terrible. That would be a horrendous decision. And I think that would open up the doors for, for revisionists around the world to start changing um, history and adapting it for their own agendas. And I would think it would set a very dangerous precedent. I think it would be a, a massive shame and I'd be, I'd be upset and disappointed that the right truthful wording wasn't, wasn't, wasn't put on. It's, it's a commemoration of the lives of people who suffered, um, who suffered as property when they were people. And thus, um, no human life should be bought or sold. And anybody who still feels that that is, was acceptable because it was the time, there is never a time to buy and sell people. The descendant of Henry Dundas. Now, I respect his views, um, and therefore he's got a right to protest. However, I've not seen his evidence. Despite Bobby's protests, the council is sticking to its guns on the wording and seeing the debate about this one statue is over. I have very little interest in continuing the discussion about one plaque and a statue. What interests me is having a much broader conversation about the many monuments that are in our city and what we should do with them and how we should tell the story of them. Because for better or worse, they're there. For better or worse, they're part of our history. Whether we remove them and put them in a museum, whether we keep them up, whether we add plaques, whatever we do, the history will still be there. And it's important that we understand that history. It's relevant to society now and understanding some of the systemic problems of racism that still exist within Edinburgh, within Scotland, within the entire world. But the wider discussion about Scotland's role in slavery and how we should recognise that as a country continues.
everyone is entitled to their view. That's what that's what makes history so so fascinating is that you can you can read up on it and and uh, and form your own opinion. Debate is healthy. Hopefully, it will get people to search for the truth on any matter. This history is not about recrimination. It's it's about living together as one people, one nation. We can't change the past, but we can change the consequences such as racism for the better. Thank you.